There were a lot of negative feedbacks for DOS, stating that it was hot, they cannot get the medal. So what went wrong with DOS? Why did difficulty spike? Is it a player problem or a game developer problem? Of course, there are some responsibilities from the game developer side, no doubt. They might have made some changes that make player's life a little bit simpler on the EN side, but after all, the hard game mode that got loads of negative feedback in CN is still that hard. Nothing has changed. That just shows how ignorant they are right now, or not, we are just a copy of the CN server. That is it. And this is something we must accept and understand, that we are just having what people had after 6 months, and the exact same thing without any improvements. I'm not here to discourage you or to mock you with your decision on spending into biggest game. I personally spent a lot into my account too, 4 digit USD not gonna lie, and it is something that I want to share after being clear of the nature of Arknights Global, just so if you would reconsider your decision and not regret in the future. So people that were providing suggestions for Arknights, I sympathize with you. I remember there was this section in the Discord group of Arknights Official for upgrade suggestions for some period of time before the officials deleted it. Still, I would still like to acknowledge your decision to try to contribute into the game for all EN players. However, nothing's gonna change, because the people running the EN servers are not the game developers of Arknights. They are just like a middleman that at most just translates the game and makes some PV and build schedules. Arknights is a very big game in CN, the fourth behind Genshin, HSR, and HOK. And why is it like nothing in global? Because they are not putting in that much effort, this is it. Just a quick fun fact, monthly cut in the CN server only costs 4 USD. And how much does your monthly cut charge in a region? Mine would be approximately 6 USD after conversion. Definitely makes sense paying for a more expensive price for something exactly the same and 6 months later. Is it impossible for them to make a PC client or push the schedule to be the same as the CN server? It is possible. It is just that there is no need for them to do so. And obviously, the CN site can't do much about it because of the contract. They were a small company when they gave the contract to Yostar to publish it globally. And from Yostar's side, why give up a gold shaking tree? Or why invest more if I'm not getting anything more? The case for Japan is much different because of their culture and stuff. I've been there myself, not the best country of mine. I understand why Arknights can peak there, but we will leave this topic for discussion some other day. Back to the main point, either ignoring or just a clone dummy, the main reason behind this is because there's no competition. That is it, and why is there no competition? Because they are not performing very well in terms of revenue, that is it. If you are a competitor, you would just go for games that earn the most, like Wuthering Waves for Genshin Impact, Persona X Mobile version for HSR. You will not be focusing on a T2 revenue game contributing only 4% when compared to Hoyoverse 12 of 70% in CN. Why compete Arknights for the small market? And that is the reason why Arknights is not improving and it is because of no competition. They are daring to be ignorant. Yep, they certainly are releasing more and more different game modes. But do you see the similarity in between these game modes? IS2, IS3, IS4, Fire Within the Sand, Tales Within the Sand, they are all very time consuming. And why is it so? Because when you are occupied with these game modes, you will not have time to explore other games. And when most of your time is just committed to a game or two, there is where the money you will spend will go. We will make a very simple example here. Why is Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail trying their best to introduce quality of life features? First, they are not a listed company. They do not need to show weird data for their shareholders. And secondly, they are confident in their content. They are so sure that despite how many games you play, they will have a place in you. They are willing to let you go have some free time, try out other games because they are confident at the end of the day, you will just end up going back to their company games. Your money will just be flowing back to them. That is it. The only reason Arknights, a side game oriented mobile game at the start, which is also not listed, is trying to make itself into a main game is because they are not confident for the competition with other games, which then explains why they are trying to take up as much consumer time as possible. Why are there more and more packs in Arknights, the anime pack and such? Why the sudden difficulty spike? They need more money. Is it for Enfield? Enfield is doomed, not gonna lie. When will it be out? 2026? 2027? And how much competitors will there be by then? 
Withering Waves will be out on May this year, which I do not recommend playing because Tencent, a nasty company which is a shareholder, Tower of Fantasy messed up, and what makes you think Anfield was success after EX Asterisis, Hypergriff's independent game developed for 3 years, was so convincing. At the very end of the day, Anfield might just be a faint goal for them to earn more than enough before the dawn of the company. Not to be hard on Arknights, Knights, I think as a player for the game, supporting a beloved game is something you can be doing. However, it might be time to slowly pull out of the game and not ignoring the downfall. And of course, player problem. Just a quick introduction to my 1 year free to play account and the roster. This roster is more than enough for DOS S3, just exclude Shu and Virtuosa. If you are a free to play player with less than 1 year of playtime, it is not your problem. You cannot be expecting a 4 year old game still allowing free to play players less than 1 year age to get past the hardest game mode of the game. Nobody rational will be expecting that and making that as a selling point. But if you are somebody with more than 1 year age of Arc Knight, unable to pass DOS 3 is your problem. Some will be saying that you just got lucky with the pulls, that's it, nothing to brag about, having good luck, but the truth is, you don't see rubbish operators here, or rubbish operators being upgraded. And this brings us to the first point, proper planning. Instead of relying on your luck as a free-to-play, what you should be doing is to minimize your risk. Why pull in unnecessary banners? If you do plan to play this game for a long period of time, and wish that the account grows, with your long-term growth to be able to finish any possible content in Arc Knights, what you should be doing is to be investing in the operators that will bring you that far. So my main aim would be to clear as much stages as AFK as possible, and therefore, I will only be focusing on operators that will help me achieve my goals. The funny and sad part of the community is that there are loads of players with waifu and meta mindset together in their mind. They want all the trim medals and don't want to invest in their wallet or in the correct operator. And at the end of the day, yelling like a retard that the game is hard when the Ian server you already have 6 months of 4C vision. It is like getting an exam paper leaked 6 months before and yet still failing your exam. So just to get your aim clear, if you want to pull for your waifu, then don't bother about the medals. If you want the medals, keep your mind free from waifus. If you want both, just make sure your wallet is thick. It is that simple and there is no point yelling in the comment section stating that the game is hard when the source of the problem is yourself. Look at that useless content all time. So you can see right here, I have so many polls that I'm not even worried that I won't be getting the 5th anniversary operator, W Alter and Teresa with logos, and I achieved all this as a free to play. Again, that comes back to planning. Yes, Escalon art is cool, Escalon lore is cool, but do I need Escalon? No, that is it. It is just that simple and I don't even need to be worried about how many polls that I'm going to be getting or what is the next operator. Yeah, these contents are great for you to plan, but they should not be a reason for you to gamble and lose a chance to get a very meta unit like AR Alter. After all, there are going to be meta units and non-meta units in the game, and Arknights is already generous enough to provide enough pool resources to a free-to-play to not only get meta units, but also some non-meta units. So why are there so many people without AR Alter? And this brings us to the third problem. I understand that there is some needs of some creator out there wanting views, being like this operator is broken, that operator is broken, like all operators in the world are broken. The market demand is that people like to see their own favorite character being commended, their own choices justified instead of being criticized. Well, that is okay if you need some sense of security from the internet, which is a bit pathetic but never mind. But when you know that it is a market demand, you should not be taking it seriously, or at least find some reliable sources. I went through a content which was quite stupid, saying that Virtuosa have the lowest priority in the next 3 months. I mean, the heck is this guy thinking about? Virtuosa has something that is irreplaceable for now. True damage before elemental defense is introduced, significant amount of slow, decreasing enemies attack, and you ranked Viviana on top of Virtuosa? Look at CC1 and CC2 right now. If you don't play the CN server, just shut up. Please my audience, choose somebody correct to watch. Oh, I can produce 150k worth materials every day in my base. Wow! So how is that gonna change anything? No, it isn't going to change nothing. If you could have put the effort of pulling Excel sheets into anything else in your life, your life would be much better. That's it. Or buy one skin less, save the 21 OP. Use it for refresh sanity. That will gain you much more. If you are still not doing any planning, this won't save you. If you did good planning, you don't need this. So why plan in the base? 
just throw random operators into the base and that is it. The base is still in beta after 4 years. The officials aren't paying attention to it anyways, because it does not matter. So, what are the other reasons you're unable to cure DOS? Skins. So, it is okay to have some fancy outfits, but even if you have 1000 wardrobes of outfits, there are only 13 you can bring out in Arc Knights, at most 40 in Tales Within the Set, and only one for each character. So, no point buying multiple skins if you are coming from a formal perspective, you get me? If you use the OP for important operators or farm materials for important investments, things could have been much more different. And please do not pull in Colonel Banner. Oh my god!